I of course wanted to mention um, Drake's album that dropped the other day. So, honestly, never mind by Drake. Um, surprise drop. We didn't have any idea it was it was happening or coming unless you were paying attention to the right podcast and stuff i did see a clip of maybe joe budden mentioning that he heard a rumor that beyonce and drake were dropping around the same time so obviously he was proved right but if you unless you were a real music junkie you probably had no idea he was coming um this summer especially on an album maybe at most you might have expected him to drop an ep for the summer or something but i don't think anyone would have expected him to drop an album especially so soon after um certified lover boy but seeing a certified lover boy was the last album in his deal and it did in my opinion feel like a compilation of just lucy's that were hanging around that kind of fitted a certified lover boy theme that he probably didn't want to just bin because it's a pretty sick name for an album especially for someone like a drake it was it was probably wasted a little bit if you think about the title and you think about drake being mixed race and you think about the kind of music that he produces so if i love a boy should have been a bit more there should be more to it in terms of looking back at it sonically artistically but whatever we move on you just would have been you just i don't know if you if you're just a casual fan maybe you wouldn't expect this to drop so soon after but i had a feeling or i had the i had a feeling especially after donda 2 that there would be maybe an acceptance or maybe even no, 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 let me say yeah let me here's my theory i had a double theory i had a fear after donda 2 and the passing of virgil that there would be some sort of a change in how drake basically approached his art because for the longest time i've kind of complained not as other fans have because i think some fans will say drake still doesn't have like a classic album like an album that you could listen to front to back and say boom that's a classic right or that's a real cohesive project the closest thing maybe you could say might be views might be nothing was the same um i think that's probably the two albums that probably stand out people in terms of being like cons co um consistent um solid pieces or bodies of work right so far we haven't got that from him he seems to be somebody that can do amazing verses amazing tunes amazing you know just in terms of just ga capturing a moment on a track but in terms of actually producing a body of work it seems to always kind of miss him but for the most part one of the things that's kind of bothered me about drake really has been his reluctance to kind of just try shit like you know how kanye does every single album is basically different from the rest similar to like a title creator for the newer generation kids now like them or not as artists or like the music or not as a fan of music as an artist you have to respect them because at least every time they put an album out it's a completely different concept it's a completely different soundscape or it's an evolution from what they've done prior they're trying loads of really crazy and creative ideas about song structures and bridge and hooks and choruses and verses and inflections of the voices like they're trying really interesting things and keep on pushing themselves and i think what that does is that it gives the customers or the listeners space and opportunity to basically um listen to what you have to pre present to them with open ears so they're not just closed and waiting for exactly what they want to hear and i feel like drake's issue over the years has been because he's been trying to service his fans too much yeah a bit too much fanfare a bit too much sorry fan service he's kind of boxed himself in where people only want to hear him rap or do the r&b stuff they don't want to hear anything else and i feel like maybe this is the best direction he could have gone in by dropping honestly never mind because this is an entire dance basically album for the most part with the exception of one track towards the end with 21 savage this is an entirely an album made of flipping house cuts whether it's deep house atmospheric house tech whatever you want to call it this is what it is and i wanted this from drake from time ago because i would have imagined him doing like a um, i tell -y, disco -y type majid jordan inspired that kind of pop um e electro electro dance sort of type music he would smash that out into pieces if he just did an album of that right an album full of those kind of tracks an album full of whatever he's into now in terms of ama piano and flipping house and stuff that would be a really great way to go about doing things and i feel like as much as people don't necessarily like this album what this will end up doing i feel like hopefully we end up resetting people's palette when it comes to drake so that they don't need to always just wait for him to drop r&b and rap stuff it can just be whatever he wants to do as an artist because now if you're drake at this level you've got nothing really to prove in that lane you've already done it and if you want to try to produce 
a classic album i think the best way he's going to be able to do a classic album for me is going to be able to go this way this route he's going at the moment where he kind of tries to put sonically an album together that kind of pushes himself out of his comfort zone that's where he's going to actually make a classic album i don't think he's going to make a classic album trying to sit there and write a flipping hardcore rap album with r&b influences i don't think it's going to work that way i think it's going to work making a quote-unquote concept album and from that you'll see the classic arise from it in my personal opinion but i loved it personally um i did what i usually do and i kind of made sure that i didn't watch or listen to anyone's opinion online i slapped it on my apple, my apple music i've now got these new amazing sony mx what is it mx freeze right wireless bluetooth headphones right um what you call it um anti-noise cancellation headphones which are great to listen to albums and stuff i whacked those on closed my eyes and just listened to it from front to back and absolutely loved it absolutely loved the entire thing and i guess because i'm a dj myself because i'm a fan of dance music because i go to nightclubs because i'm a flipping nightlife aficionado this immediately kind of grabbed my attention and kind of st- kind of hit a note with me and obviously being a european maybe it kind of resonated with me more so if you're an american fan of drake you probably don't really get it because you don't really probably go to clubs like that or you don't really like house music like that but for someone like myself who hears this music all the time when i'm out and listens to it and plays it out and about and stuff this definitely is something that i um would be into 100 percent and it was funny too because i'm a fan of kind of music too this great little um collective of djs and labeled and whatnot and you know merch whatever else they do and production there's just like an entire crew of kids doing or guys sorry doing some cool interest and stuff in the sort of um atmospheric dance music or house music scene it was fairly evident as soon as falling back came on track two that it was uh, and me and Ramper that were involved in it you could hear it straight away from when they from when that track played so that was pretty sick to see it's actually produced by black coffee which i like too because there was a lot of cohesion throughout the entire tracks so i've heard some people say it was boring and it kind of sounded a bit one note but i did feel like there was a real thread that tied all the tracks together and of course that comes from having a one person or a team of people who have the same sort of musical influences kind of overseeing the entire thing such as a black coffee and for me personally i just enjoyed the entire honestly i really did the only track that probably st- stuck out like a soft fan might have been jimmy cooks which in 21 savage um, maybe that was just a way for him to kind of give us a taste of what's to come for the next ep because i think here now soon after there's going to be another scary hours coming out so that should be happening soon i think or maybe that's going to be for halloween I'm not really too sure but i'm a big fan of it i really did enjoy it i think this is going to be very popular throughout the summer especially here in europe i think we're going to hear it all over the festivals i've seen people do memes about it being played at all the gay clubs and stuff which i think is crazy and funny because for the most part most of the gay and alternative clubs that they we have here in the uk and london most of them play really hard aggressive techno or really campy disco music it's nothing really in between you don't really get a lot of um gay nights where they just play house music i don't really i can't really think of many especially here in london most of them are either really hardcore techno or like kink parties and sex parties or they just really camp ultra ultra camp you know ymca type style disco type stuff um so that whole thing was really interesting especially when you consider that sound that he's trying to replicate on honestly never mind is mostly kind of aligned with the kind of bro culture here in the uk which is kind of tech housey which i don't really think it's tech housey i've heard a lot of people say it is tech house i don't really feel tech i feel a lot of house i feel a lot of ama piano i feel a lot of deep house atmospheric like i said i mentioned beforehand um but i don't really see a lot of tech house vibes in it for the most for the most part but i could imagine a lot of those tech house producers are going to be clamoring all over themselves to try and get out edits and remix some of the tracks because they're going to sound absolutely phenomenal once they've been edited and whatnot and cut up and chopped and stretched and whatever it may be but i really did enjoy it i think it was a very brave decision from him um considering everything he's achieved considering what people expect considering what he probably pressure he puts himself um but then on the flip side of it if you're just going to be a little bit cynical you could say if you're going to be cynical does it feel like drake has never really fully recovered from that whole push a t battle thing and is this kind of a continued long drawn out sort of concussion that he's sort of suffering with in terms of his inability to put together a somewhat cohesive project 
to the point where he's just like you know what fuck rapping i'm just gonna go and jump on this house thing do you know what i mean this is i'm just i need to get i need to, he's, he's kind of doing that thing what people do where you're basically trying to force some motivation you want to put yourself in a situation so it's going to spark something in you so in order for you to kind of react off of because you've got nothing to react off of do you know what i mean maybe that's one of the vibes i'm not really too sure but that aside i really did enjoy it um i can't wait to see how this evolves it be just to see if this becomes like the lightning rod for a lot of people within hip-hop to maybe check out some of the people within that whole atmospheric tech house scene that i'm into you know labels like innovision and of course kind of music and whatnot they're doing some interesting stuff maybe people will start exploring that kind of thing that'd be really cool because i do think there's a lot of parallels and overlap between rap hip-hop music and that kind of scene um of course those people love um what you call it the people that love um that kind of house music are already into vocals so it's not like you're going to techno where for the most part people don't really like vocals too tough and it can sometimes be a bit of a dud in there i feel like if you was ability to maybe have some of those big artists come in on house i think it would be work really really well and also it's a real shame too because i think there's a snippet on there which plays and um, i think you no, know, there's a poem or there's a note on there that basically speaks about it being an ode to virgil abloh of course the acclaimed designer who unfortunately passed away and um this would have been an album that he would have loved really really would have loved virgil would have absolutely loved this album 100 percent um it's probably an and it's probably a what you call it a summation of everything that he's been trying to do in terms of merging the high and the low right in terms of bringing people who look like me and you into spaces like ibifa into these kind of quote-unquote white um, business techno type event type places and to make it look more like the out of the outside world for the most part because that's the one place that you can kind of feel like it operates in a bit of a bubble dance music in it it doesn't necessarily reflect the the world that's basically around or interacting with them for the most part you go to some of these big dance music nights and festivals and whatnot and sometimes a crowd is completely different to who's up on stage it doesn't make any sense and doesn't necessarily change the same lineup same people same colored races and creeds and maybe you know the whole reason why virgil was trying to always position himself in front and center and be the dj person and try and do everything even if he wasn't maybe the best at it was to be like no my face also needs to be placed on here because i need kids to understand that you can also do this you can also present at this high level on this stage too it doesn't always need to be trap rap stuff just playing for your your friends who also wear jordan ones and you know distressed jeans it could also be for these type of people they also get what you're doing i mean there's a link that ties people together it's all part of culture so that might be something that i think would have been a great thing for him to have seen but you know but again as as i've always mentioned previous times i think one of his best parts of his legacy is always the work and i feel like you know now with this album regardless of how it's been received critically i think it's still going to inspire a whole group of people to go out there and start maybe exploring house music and maybe starting to put themselves in different spaces and environments that they probably wouldn't have done before challenge their ears challenge their palates um challenge their taste whatever it may be and try some new things and who knows what may come out of it so um really is a great way to kind of honor a man's legacy by just being curious and exploring things and hopefully um whatever you explore can then go and touch others out there as well but yeah i really enjoyed the album i really liked it um like i said for the most part i don't really care what critics review say about stuff i listen to stuff with my own ears um but again i might be a bit biased because i'm already a part of this scene this community i'm of, I'm, I'm already going to the flipping um inner visions label night or you know lost in a moment in flipping the uk here in a few weeks so i already showed where i'm at in terms of that stuff you know i'm already obsessed with arm and dixon and all these kind of djs so maybe i'm already a bit of a um compromise or bias in that way but i really did enjoy it but if you haven't already checked it out i'm sure most of you know what the album is honestly never mind by drake is out now on all of your streaming platforms definitely check it out definitely go and check it out